Hello everybody and welcome to module 3. So finally we've now reached the, the end module where we're going to be taking everything we've learned up to this point and putting it all together. This module is going to be a lot more advanced and for anyone that is still sort of new to it you may need to take it a little bit slowly through this section. If you do get lost try to refer back to the previous modules maybe go through certain lessons and, and familiarize yourself with it and then come back and, and don't give up just kind of keep pursuing it because everything that we do here we have covered in the previous lessons in the previous weeks and modules so it should all be available to you but sometimes it takes a while for that information to settle in and really start to make sense but that is truly the you know the essence of real learning it's one thing if you can just follow along but if you can fully understand it as we go then you'll never forget it so try to make sure that you do because this is how you'll then get the most out of the out of the class so in this module we're going to be taking a look at a few um, pipeline tools and specifically building up a little bit of a pipeline that uh, you know a freelancer could use or maybe even a small studio but you know if anything it just it shows you an example of exactly how you would use this Python knowledge to speed up workflow or to even allow you to do things that you could never do without it with every pipeline tool what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a little bit of a demo with that tool before we start the class I'll show you exactly what it should do what the goal is and then we're gonna work it up basically from the ground up but knowing where our end goal is is very important now obviously in this case I get to sort of show you uh, the final product before we attack it in real life you obviously wouldn't really be able to do that unless you're trying to just rebuild something that you've seen somewhere else but this process of of thinking of the end goal is very important and I would like you to focus on that even when you're building your own tools it's very important to take some time to sit and think about where it's going particularly think about the user think about the end goal the end product who is going to actually be using it and for what reason because a lot of the times you know it's nice to build these scripts that do cool and fancy things but you know in certain contexts that's useless and, and has no practical application whereas if you think about the end user and say what would they do with it do I really need to include this particular feature you know when they click on a button what would they expect to happen or intuitively what you know if you were using that tool what features would you want to find on that tool in order for it to make things easier just simple things like when in a certain mode other things get hidden or when you click a certain button things reset themselves or you know just you need to think take some time to think of the end goal first and that's why you'll see what we often do is even build like with an HDA I will build the actual structure of the HDA with all the parameters and things first but they don't do anything nothing's linked up no buttons work but just the you can almost see the the empty shell first then we start building the script from the ground upwards to match that end goal okay it's it's just important to think this way because then at the end of the day you have a tool that functions intuitively and then we also need to take the additional step of making sure that there are help files a help file for the tool or when you hover over a parameter it should tell you what that parameter does or at the very least the parameter should be very intuitive and it shouldn't require any you know help it should make total sense and if it doesn't especially if you give this to somebody else without telling them at all what it does if they can't figure it out then your tool is too complicated and you need to simplify it or provide some help these are very important steps in designing pipeline tools uh, or tools especially if you're wanting to maybe make some tools and um, distribute them sell them or you know give them to your friends or whatever it's pointless for making a tool that nobody actually needs or wants you need to design what there is a need for all right 
So this is basically the approach we're going to be taking in this module. Um, and when you work with your own tools, try to just use your imagination or even write it down. Think of the end goal. What would I be doing? How would I use this? Then we create a list of features saying, okay, it needs to do this. It needs to do that. And then from those list of features, we can figure out, okay, well, how do I make it do that? And even though we've covered a lot of um, Python and Houdini already, there may be certain um, functions that you want to perform that we haven't covered, but it's easy enough when you know what the end goal is to go and research that. You can Google it, you can search in the, um, in the help file for a certain function that might be able to do something like that or ask on forums or whatever. And it's easy enough to sort of go from the features that you need backwards to find functions that give you those results. All right. So uh, as we go through, after showing you the demo, you'll know exactly what the tool should be able to do. You are welcome if you want to push yourself to then stop at that point and try to build it yourself. Um, but I would still encourage you, even if you build it yourself, your tool will probably go off in a very different direction to mine then because we're getting to a very advanced territory here. So there's a million ways to build the same type of thing. I would still encourage you to follow along step by step as well, even even if you've built an entirely different tool that does it in a slightly different way, because I am going to be covering very specific things and showing you small little details as we go. And it would be good for you to know those and understand them and particularly to put them into practice. And at the end of the day, all of these tools kind of link up. The first one we're going to be doing is our scene data node, which sets all of our project and scene variables. And then our, our save scene um, script is based on all of this. So if you have built a separate tool, they won't synergize or link up. And so I still encourage you to follow along, but it is good to, if you feel like you understand something to pause, try build it yourself, then see how I do it, compare your method and mine, or once you've built what I show you, try to take it a step further. You'll find that a lot of the way through this course, uh, especially this last module, I'm going to point at certain areas where the tool could be improved or upgraded. And I will allow, like, leave that up to you to then take it a bit further. You can add your own, you know, ex additional variables in here. You can add additional features or things like that. Um, but particularly at the end of each tool, once it's functioning properly, you can then go and add those extra features because you know, then at least the features that we need are there so that it will synergize with the rest of the tools that we build. But you've built an, an upgraded version of it, essentially. Right. Okay. So throughout this module, we will occasionally uh, sort of sidetrack from the main pipeline building to just cover one or two additional modules, more advanced modules that we haven't covered up to this point. This is just because you know, we we need certain knowledge in order to continue building this. And I wanted to reach a sort of a much more advanced level before covering some of the more um, intricate modules. Uh, but for the majority, what we're going to basically be doing is just working through these uh, scripts. And I will start off, you know, I mean, this is pretty advanced, but I will start off, I guess, a little slower in that I'm going to make sure we understand each function as we build it. But once we've done a particular type of building a function or linking up a callback or something, then we're just going to speed up, start copy pasting things and just kind of move a little bit faster. So if it gets a bit overwhelming, gets a bit confusing, try to just pause, go back, redo, because once you understand, and then it's going to help you a lot. All right. So Good luck, everyone, and I look forward to seeing the end result of everything, all the work that we've put into this so far.